How far will people go to maintain their wokeness? We now see that inflation concerns are overtaking COVID concerns, and I suspect trends like this can to continue as inflation and the economy gets worse and worse because people have left less time to maintain and hold their frame of extreme political correctness when it comes to certain viruses, genders, and virtually anything of the sort, ESG, climate change, everything that we see that is getting pushed massively in the news today, I think will become much less of an issue as everything in the economy starts to go down. Absolutely, Josh. My thinking on this is I look at Europe right now in terms of the energy that they have to source. So you can go back to what is I think Gerhard Schroeder was the one who led the initial champ or who, who initially championed uh, Germany getting off nuclear power, you know, for, you know, environmental reasons or purportedly for environmental reasons. But the catch is that in so doing, they put German or the German energy market uh, to be very dependent upon importing energy from external markets, particularly some markets that might not necessarily align from a value perspective completely. A case in point of this is look at what's going on right now. Germans in Western Europe in general needs to import natural gas. Natural gas is a large part of the natural gas they would import is exported by Russia. And so it's one of these things where I'm fond of saying you can always tell who holds power in a relationship by who holds the power to walk away. And in this particular situation, my suspicion is, is that Western Europe needs Russian gas more than Russia needs Western European um, remittances in any stretch of the imagination. So it's one of those things where, uh, again, like, you know, to quote Gammon on this and many others, you always kind of want to ask the question, you know, at what cost? And so it gets back into, you know, this wokeness concept over here in the States, which I think is, well, when you're comfortable, it's very, you have a lot of inertia. You don't necessarily want to challenge the status quo. Now, on the other hand, when you have discomfort, it's like, well, wait a minute, you know, something's not right here. I don't like this. You know, with the, what's going on here? Or one's tolerance for nonsense, I think, is greatly reduced the more discomfort one is experiencing. So to your point, to the question you asked earlier, is that if you have gas prices going up in, in the States, if you have food prices going up in the States, and then you have political parties and, you know, various leaders coming on and saying, oh, well, we need to promote, you know, moral virtue, A, B, C, D, or whatever, right? People will scratch their head and say, okay, listen, you know, you can do whatever you want to do, but I'm paying six, seven, ten dollars a gallon for gasoline. We don't have time for this nonsense right now. So to answer your question, I think it is um, one of the silver linings of seeing inflation going up across the board. If it focuses people on saying, okay, listen, we now have this pan society problem, at least a pan society irritant that we need to focus on. And in a strange way, when you have like a common enemy, in this case, enemy being inflation, it actually does a good job of helping people align and resonate on a common uh, goal versus everyone saying, I want to do this, I want to do that or whatever. And just, that's just, you know, bound for, um, or that's just replete to let people, you know, do every, do whichever they want to do. Yeah, when times are good, it is very easy to push these narratives because people are very willing to sacrifice things that they think are morally right to then provide for a greater good, at least at what they think their opinions are. But when times get very tough and you're having a hard time putting food on the table or housing your children, then your opinions on these subjects are not going to be as strong because you won't have the luxury to care as much. So here's where I think the two main outcomes could overlay. Let's say we go into a very bad recession, maybe even a depression, and people are really, really hurting. I think they will either cry out for a leader such person, which then we could go into a dictatorship style uh, communist or Marxist type of, of takeover because people are searching for a, a answer and politicians are very good at giving answers but not providing them. So I think we could seek one of those dictators or we could kind of fight back and fight for freedom where people are kind of rationally thinking about things. We finish off the the fourth turning and then we start to produce more and have a, a much healthier society because of it. I hope it is the latter and not the former, but I don't know which way we're going to lean. Personally, I'm slightly optimistic as we are starting to see tides shift between these woke narratives just because of the simple fact that people don't have as much luxury time to so soak up uh, propaganda as anymore. People lack the uh, the capital to indulge uh, moral escapades. Yeah. Now, I would say, just as far as a leader goes, like I think it's the nature of the fourth turning to have a strong leader come into play, and in what form example. that comes in, though. Now, is that going to come in a dictator type style takeover, uh, or are we going to get a strong leader where we can prosper? I, I don't know what the answer to that is. 
See, the way I think about it is right now, it's like if you have a pendulum that swings between the individual and swings between the collective right now, the pendulum has, sw and this is, you know, pure fourth turn right here, it has swung so far over to the individual that it, it's just ridiculous. And the, every single individual will have every single individual's like uh, goals, sense of morality, things that they should shoot for, whatever, right? So the point is society is not on the same page. So the individual has a very rich inner life, but society collectively is just, you know, going down in flames. My thinking is, is that I think in order to close out the fourth turn, and go back from you know the, the crisis to the next highest that you actually need a strong leader and in a sense you need a dictator and this is where it gets really interesting if you have a dictator that comes in that actually discharges the the, the duties of the office responsibly or whatever that actually can be a tremendous plus assuming such a person is willing to you know um then uh, you know give up power after it and I, I, I would wildly disagree with that well, well hold, 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 hold. keep going yeah, you, you could say the probabilities of that happening would be low, and I, I, I that 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 is a very astute assessment. But just like conceptually, conceptually, like look, the thing is, when you concentrate power in a centralized entity or whatever, right, you're you're able to cut through red tape incredibly quickly. That can be a plus. That can be a minus. Again, it gets back. It's not like, like nuclear energy or like you know bioengineering or whatever, right? You know, it's not inherently good nor is it inherently bad. It's you know the end application of how it's used for. You know, and obviously you can think of you know things that would you know be very beneficial and things that are the um, substance of nightmares when it, when it comes to the stuff. My thinking is is that right now I think society, particularly the Western moral virtues, you've got this you know infatuation with slave or Nietzsche would argue to be slave morality. Separate video, but the point is is that a lot of the virtues that I think that we in the West hold as esteem are actually anti virtues. You know, that they're actually not quite what we think they are. And the more and more we try to go after them, this is where we get the woke narrative nonsense coming in. The more and more we try to go after them, we get poorer and poorer and poorer results. And rather than having a come to Jesus moment saying, well, wait a minute, maybe we're aligning ourselves to the wrong virtues, we just think to ourselves, oh, we just have to double down. You know, the reason we're not getting the results that we want, even though we've been trying this, you know, for the past 20, 30, 40 years, is because of systemic whatever. So we just need to keep doubling down. In other words, we keep getting sicker and sicker and sicker. And so we keep demanding more and more medicine. But the reality is the medicine that we're eating is actually the poison being sold to us as the medicine. So the more and more medicine we eat, the sicker and sicker we become. And we think, oh, we just need more and more medicine, which further compounds the problem. Oh, yeah, just like in Brave New World, we just need to continue to continuously take our Soma pills. It takes yeah. a very, very small group of people to stop taking the pills to see the light. To finish it off, how far will people go to maintain this woke mindset i don't know and i don't know if they will ever let go there's a, going to be a small group of people who have already built their identity upon this and will never let go but i do think and i hope at least this is me hoping that there will be the um, the majority of people can not only let go of this narrative but reflect and see where their wrongdoings were i don't know if i'm too optimistic but when you hit rock bottom you can have a lot of come to jesus moments and hopefully we do not experience too much pain oh so uh it's it's hard to bounce back before you hit bottom someone um i, I used to uh and still do uh, pay a lot of attention to mention that only at the edge only upon the precipice will people find the will to change and so i think there's that and, and that's the, the main thing. key. How much pain can we take to find the will to change, but not too much to push you over the edge? That who no one knows the answer to. But that yeah. is what we need to look for in the coming years and to find out if our society is or is not doomed. Yeah. That other person also mentioned that let's just say 5% of people will be lost forever. It could, of course, be worse. Hopefully it could be better. But let's just say, you know, if one out of 20 people can never bounce back, that's that that would be um disappointing and i guess just you know you know put a button on this you know think back to bloom talking about minerva's owl only takes flight at dusk and so the art is is that if you can see the owl before dusk actually comes in other words if you can repent and have your come to jesus moment before it is too late even if it's like the last second before it's too late that still counts as being before too late so hopefully like i said we're able to um pull our head out of our backside sooner rather than